Old well, Chief, top of table clash down yep. tomorrow. Does it feel like a big game? Oh, it's like every other game, to be fair. I'm not really, uh, I'm not buying into the uh, all the hype because for us, uh, the value of this game is the same as every other game. It's just worth three points. I'm sure you'll be thrilled for me to point out last time you played Melbourne Victory, it was um, zero shots. But um, how much do you feel like the attack has grown since then because, you know, you're just coming off um, a 4-3? Uh, it's definitely matured. You know, we've also, you know, matured, I think, tactically. I think we've, uh, we're finding the right cohesion now with uh, the front three. Um, and as well, I think our sixes are quite brave in the build-up and with our full-backs bobbing on, it's, um, we're finding a nice balance and, and the fact that now we've played a majority of players you know, uh, in and out every week, uh, that helps a lot as well. So uh, I don't think we'll have it that easy this week against Victory. I think they're uh, probably, uh, when it comes to defending, probably the best team in the league. Quite compact, they're ball orientated on the press and um, yeah, they're really efficient. So it's going to be a real hard game uh, to, for us tomorrow to break them down. Yeah, because I guess in that game you sort of wear the early storm, but now that you're back at home, you're top of the table, mm -hmm. and players like Costa's in great form, do you want to take the game to them and be on the front foot a bit more? Yeah, um, yeah sorry, I had something in my way. Um, yeah, for us, uh, we're at home, so we're going to try and dominate the game. Uh, you know, we're going to go out there with the intent that, you know, they're coming to uh, to play us, and and you know, uh, with all home games, uh, we've we've tried to take the initiative. Um, that's usually, uh, if you if you look at the trend in the league, you know, most home teams, uh, you know, try to take the front foot. Uh, if you look at victory at home, you know, they're always assertive on the press when they travel away, probably a little bit more conservative, you know, they, they factor in travel um, as well, you know, the change of venue, you know, you're not used to the stadium, the pitch as well, so all that is always factored in. Um, I just want to get back to your first answer where you said it's just another game. It's not it just is. another game though, is it? Because you, you get a chance to test yourself against another really high quality opponent and you probably have your biggest crowd of the year. Yeah, potentially, but what's the difference between the Perth game? It's three points. So for us, the focus is always on that 90 minutes and trying to get the best result we can. Whether it's victory or Sydney, every game's tough in the A-League. I, I say this every week. Uh, you know, even last week, Perth, uh, they were, an, I thought they were a really good opponent and they really stretched us, you know, probably harder than um, some of the other teams. Um, so if I go into the focus where this game is the end-all and be-all, uh, then what happens the next game? So that's the mindset, the, uh, the, mind, the mindset that I take. Is there, like, I'm not saying it's illegitimate. Sure. Much, yeah. But like, is there value in elevating it for your players to say, like, let's see what we can really do against a really good opponent, or? Uh, but again, I think every week it's the same. Uh, every opponent that we play is a good opponent. Uh, I think we're discrediting the rest of the league and, and the teams. There are a lot of good teams out there and teams are actually sorting themselves out now. But uh, if I go in there with the emphasis that this is the be all and end all, it takes away from, from the remainder of the season. The players will be motivated themselves. I don't need to tell them, you know, the value of this game. They, they will take into it what they, what they want. But for me, again, it's the focus is on the performance and the 90 minutes. Okay. Well, just a word then on the crowd because you've come from this, sure. you know, pretty paltry Unite affair to Friday night lights. You know, could be ten thousand. Yep. Certainly the best crowd of the year. That's yep. got to be a good good night for the club. No, it'd be great. That's that's fantastic. That's one thing that uh, I was on a radio interview uh, the other day. I was talking about potentially what the difference in the game will be. I think it'll definitely will be the crowd and our home fans. Uh, the Wanderers game was a really good uh, indication of that. I felt as though. Uh, the crowd kept us in because there was a belief that we could beat Wanderers in that game and when we scored that goal in the 90th the place was rocking so for me um, I hope that the crowd does turn out and it will be the difference. Chiefy, I'm, I'm sure when you started this role you expected to do, to do well but I'm just wondering did you expect to do this well, top of the table, in your first season? Are you surprised yeah, at it? Yeah, look, uh, my expectation was uh, not, not to be first you know, or in this position. My uh, my expectation was that we turn would turn over performances every week and be competitive. And wherever the results, uh, you know, uh, fell, well, uh, how they eventuate, um, you know, that's not up to me. That's up to you know the football gods. So they've been really kind to us. Uh, but I think the boys have also been very deserving. Does it start to feel like you, you could win the whole thing this year? Uh, I won't answer that till we get to the grand final. Chief, um, first nine games of the season, seven mm -hmm. goals conceded, eight in the last three games. Mm -hmm. Is that something you've looked to unpack and, and drill down into? Well, it depends what con context you put it in. Um, no one's asked me yet what we did differently last game. Um, I'm still waiting for a reporter to ask me, and I'll answer it. Um, we pressed for the first time, uh, that we, and we conceded three goals. One goal was due to the press, and uh, the other two goals were actually exceptionally well taken. Um, 
And for me, the fact that we can change the style of our game and evolve uh, as the season progresses is actually quite promising. Uh, in the other games, also you put into context uh, the Sydney FC game, we conceded two goals late, one potentially came from us maybe overplaying a little bit, which was more an error than it was more stylistic, and then we went man to man, so that's on me because we were chasing the game. Uh, so we could probably consider two goals that we otherwise wouldn't and the Adelaide game um, You know the look the set piece was pretty soft at the start, but Ibazuki, you know We, we knew that that was the threat which is poorly defended um, But we, we learned from that and you know structurally that helps us moving forward But again, you know even the second goal they scored was a really good goal from a really good player set up by a really good player So, you know, you don't take that away from Adelaide. They went and they beat Sydney 4-3 away from home. So uh, it can't be every game that we're unbelievably, you know, good at defending. You know, there are times where the opponent does play well, so you have to take that into context. Are you likely to press tomorrow night? Oh, we'll, we'll wait and see. Um, potentially, we could. You know, again, we're the home team, so for us, we need to take the initiative, and you know, it just really depends on um, how I feel uh, victory will play, and and I have to counter that. And the, the one real contestable position, certainly in, in your defensive line, has been left back. Uh, Daniel, Daniel Arzani is in the Melbourne Victory team in pretty good form. I know he doesn't always go down that side. Mm -hmm. But do you take that into account when you make your selection for left back? Oh, look, we take every consideration the opposition gives us. You know, Daniel's a very good player. Um, I've, you know, I've liked him for a long time. You know, I'd, uh, I saw him when he was at Sydney FC Youth um, when I was coming through. You know, exceptional talent. Um, I feel as though you know we respect him, but they have players like Falami as well, Filupale, uh, very very good players that will um, you know be a threat on either side. So for me, I I think assessing this uh, week with the left back role, we might do something a little bit tactically. So I have to put in the the player that I think that would best suit our, our tactical setup. Uh, and then we just move from there. Just one final one from me. Oscar sure. Zavada still on track for a February, early February return perhaps? Well, today was his first training uh, where he was involved with the group, which was promising. Uh, so he did the warm up and he did the, uh, the big rondo, which was good. Um, so that looks promising. You know, he's uh, complaining that, sorry, He's not, not complaining anymore about his, uh, his, the soreness in, in the leg, so that, that looks very promising. Do you think he hopes that Costa takes his record? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> no, I think, look, he's happy that the team's doing really well, and I think he's really looking forward to coming back into the gr group and contributing. How much of um, confidence do you get when you've got a striker in such good goals coming form like Costa who's scoring every game at the moment? Oh, look, for me, it's uh, it's fantastic. You know, it's uh, Costa. Costa deserves to be where he's at at the moment. You know, he does all the hard work. Um, uh, you know, and in terms of the coaching staff, we all we all believe that. You know, uh, this is no surprise. Um, but again, I think you know, I think this year even. BK has contributed quite significantly. You know, Bawley, when he's played, he's, you know, contributed. Oldie, you know, they, they've all done exceptionally well. And Oz, is, when he's played as well, has also played his part. So I'm happy for all my attackers, especially when they score goals. And we saw um, Gabriel get his first appearance on the bench in the last game. Sure. Uh, what was the reason for, for promoting him in, in that one? And um, how he sort of responded to... to well, well, there was an opportunity to come onto the bench. And I felt I needed another attacker. Um, I felt... Uh, since he's come back from his holidays, he's, he's actually sharpened up quite a bit. I think he needed that break as well, more mentally than anything. Um, so he's coming a, a, along quite nicely. Um, I was looking for an opportunity to play him on the on um, on Sunday. That opportunity unfortunately didn't come. But um, you know he's young. He's going to get plenty of opportunities um, as his career progresses. And it how much of a, a different threat are Melbourne victory without Bruno Fornaroli because, you know, he was just scoring for fun, um, but once you take him out of the team, yeah, do, do, are they not as, as dangerous? Like, yeah, how, how do you see the way they set up without him? I think um, Bruno's uh, strength is he has the ability to, to play with his back to goal and bring the play in under pressure. You know, there's a lot of clips that you'll see with him, you know, holding up the ball, dragging three or four players in and then opening up the space for the wingers. Um, I think Conor Metis is playing there at the moment, sort of similar player, maybe uh, doesn't have the goal scoring record, but he's just as effective. Um, but if you look at the overall squad with Victory, they're actually quite good right across the park. So as much as a bigger loss uh, as he is, uh, they still have a lot of players that can hurt you. And so, you know, we're very respectful of that. Um, just reported by Bill yesterday about re-signing Costa. Mm -hmm. Do you want to? 
well, I've had those conversations with him, and for me, he's one of the most valuable players in the team. So, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Can you afford him if he keeps scoring like he is? Uh, well, that's a very, very good question. And, um, you know, look, with all clubs uh, and the salary uh, salary cap, you know, has its restrictions. And, um, you know, unfortunately, like, you know, players are like assets, right? The the more they pay you back in dividend, the more they're, you know, the stock's worth. So um, I'm hoping to sign him sooner rather than later because I could be broke for next year. So, mm. <laughs> I mean, is there any sense of, I know we, I tend to bring this up, other people brought this up, you know, sure. warding off the Auckland signings. So any, does that come into the equation at all? Not really. If they, if they want to pay through the nose for him, you know, so be it. I mean, I can't dictate what happens in the market, unfortunately. I'm actually quite pleased that our players are uh, valued that highly because, uh, you know, they're every cent uh, or they're worth every cent. Um, but for me, you know, the thing is, Costa's playing his best football here. I think he feels very comfortable here, he has his family here, and I think this is the... I, I, I don't think I've seen him play like this for a couple of years, and I think... It, He's comfortable enough where I feel like he knows that I have the, the coaching staff has his trust, uh, trust in the team. I think he's very good within the group. But it's in saying that, you know, there are there are many suitors overseas looking for good strikers, and you know we can't um, we can't dictate what the market does. So yeah, the, um, you're top of the ladder. Yes. But victory have a better goal difference. Yes. So this is because of the change in the off season that no one knew about, where wins are valued above goal difference. Mm -hmm. Were you surprised when you learnt that? Um, no, I've, I've followed football for quite a bit. Um, so I've gone through most scenarios where they've changed head-to-head -head goal difference. Um, it's for, for me, I like the classic one where if you're on the table, um, so I'll, I'll bring it back to Serie A in the 80s, you know. Please. Um, <laughs> So they had a great format where, you know, end of the season, if teams finish on equal points, they would play off, whether it be a relegation or a championship, and that sorts out any issues. And it also gives a, a nice feeling at the end of the season that, you know, you have that opportunity. So it's almost like a final series. I like that. I think in season, it really doesn't matter. It only matters at the end of the season. Um, and I think a similar format would be exciting for the league, but obviously they have semi-finals and you know a, a grand final to, to decide that. Now it, it really comes down to the league and, and what they want to promote. You know, if it's attacking football, then obviously it's goal difference. But a team with a good defensive record can have a high goal difference, and a team that is a really attacking team can have a smaller goal difference if they can see quite a bit. So, you know, it's really semantics more than anything. That's why I saved it to last. Yeah, that was good. <laughs> cool. Nothing else? Yeah. Cool. Uh, just a question. Um, sure. The players have talked about you bring fresh ideas and, and certain creativity, I guess. Most how, times, yeah. <laughs> yeah. How different <laughs> tactically could we see this team variate throughout the season? Oh, you'll see every game. Uh, I've changed something, um, whether it be structural uh, or with our rotations or with our positional play. Um, I always think the and this is just my personal style and you know I can't speak for other coaches I love changing things in a game because I think it throws the element of surprise it also keeps the other coach on edge and then if they're adjusting then I can always adjust back or have another variation um, and that's really like I wouldn't say it's mind games it's actually the art of like you know battling through tactically uh, I'm quite comfortable like that um, I know some other coaches aren't they like just you know having their their game set um, but there are some times where I just don't change anything because I feel like it's working. Um, but, you know, there are times where it comes to half time and I just go with my gut and I think, all right, you know what, this is not working. I might change things defensively just as an element of surprise to stop the opposition. But um, I've been doing this now for 15 years, so I've been toying with this quite a bit. So I'm actually comfortable doing it um, and I'll keep doing it until I feel like it doesn't work. So could we see Oscar and Costa back in the team, but maybe with different roles? Yeah, it could that potentially it could uh, might have to be a change of formation, but the principles will be the same. Our mindset will still be the same. Uh, whether we play with two nines or one nine or three attackers, as opposed to having any nines, we might not have any nines tomorrow night. You know, so I'll do what's best, and then I'll just give them the ideas, and then they just run with it. Cost injured. <laughs> Sorry? Is Costa injured? No, Costa's not injured. <laughs> have you given any more thought of whether you're going to strengthen now that the transfer window is open? Oh, I feel like the squad is strong enough. I think it's more about whether we need long-term uh, 
maybe in anticipation if you know you get a couple of cards you get an injury it's more about depth uh, I feel that the squad is strong um, so I'll, I'll consider that after this game whether or not we actually need anything um, I'm just happy to keep going along as everyone's fit but unfortunately you know Injuries happen, suspensions happen, so then, then you have to reevaluate. I know the club said at the start of the season they've been a bit of interest in, in Oscar Zawada. Mm -hmm. um, has that materialised in this transfer window too? And you know, maybe has him getting injured been a good time for you guys, bad time for, for a move overseas? Yeah, has anything happened there? Oh, you probably have to ask him that. Um, you know, for me, there's always interest in Oz, irrespective. You know, he's going to come to his end of his contract at the end of the year. Uh, and most clubs that uh, are in this cycle now. Uh, are all looking for nines, usually teams that are, you know, that aren't scoring. So, you know, he, he'd be up there uh, on, on their lists, you know, whether it's here in the A-League or, or in Asia, a, a, even in Europe. So, um, yeah, there, there, there might be interest, but, um, you know, I, we haven't received an offer for him now. Is um, re-signing him on the cards? Again, uh, it comes down to budget. It really comes down to how much money I have available for next year. We've that's your decision now or at the end of the year? Um, no, I think that's probably a more of an ongoing uh, situation. Um, you know, it's also, I have to assess whether the player wants to be here at the end of the year. Um, and that's a discussion, you know, that will be between him and, um, him and the club over the next uh, couple of weeks. Uh, but I feel as though he's probably he's wanting to to probably move overseas uh, and get an opportunity to play uh, as he feels in probably in a league that probably test him. Um, and you know, uh, like I said, good strikers are always in demand. Would that pro um, you know, put the importance on retaining Costa more than if you know? If potentially, yeah, there? potentially. I, I'd want to keep Costa because I feel as though um, you know he wants to be here. Um, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's, as, as I said, his family's here, so um, I think it's a bit of a no-brainer. Um, whereas Oz, I think, uh, you know, there's been a lot of interest and I feel as though if he gets the right offer to go overseas, I think he'll take it. And what about um, BK? Because, um, yeah, he's been you know, great for, for you guys. Yep. Is, is he someone you would like to, to keep and is he someone who's still pretty young, you know, might have ambitions to it's quite a high level? Yeah, for me, my... Uh, my impression with BK is as much as he wants to stay, he's settled here. I think he's good enough to go back overseas and test those waters. But again, we'll have to speak to him um, uh, on a one-on-one -on -one basis and see where what, what he wants to do. I think he's good enough to go back to Europe. I think he's good enough to, to um, you know, make a play at, at a really good league. Um, but if he wants to stay, definitely I, I, I would we'll try and keep him. Does the club get anything when these players leave? On a free transfer? Mm. No, so it's more solidarity for under 23s. That's a FIFA protects uh, the clubs in that respect. Uh, anything over 23, uh, once they move, there's there's really nothing that, that comes back to the club. Is that frustrating or is it just the way it is? No, nah, it's just like unfortunately. Yeah, like, uh, look, it, it, it can work both ways, right? You you There's always a element of risk when you sign a player from overseas and they come in and, you know, it, it's all varied on, on performance. So sometimes you, you're you actually grateful that you get a player maybe on cheaper than, or sorry, cheaper uh, um, uh, than what you usually would if they were in form. So I'd look at it as if they've been beneficial to the club and obviously if we can't cash, cash in on, you know, the transfer, uh, they must be doing well. Like if it's twenty goals and they've you know they've repaid their their value. So yeah. The Phoenix would get a reputational bump too, right, from helping out players and not keeping them against their will or all that sort of stuff. No, I think if you look at uh, since you know Ulfi started and when I came with Ulfi, the reputation is we've always done well with the foreigners. So uh, it's given us a reputation. If you come here, that you know one will provide an environment where you can perform, and that where they've you know when they move on, you know that they have some value.